Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Now then, what about a species that's really quite hard to catch? The bigger it grows, the more they say intelligent it gets. Harder to catch. Hmm, bit of a challenge there. No, no, thank God, not the carp, where you can hook themselves and just basically you wake up and wind them in. I'm talking about fish that you have to present a bait to properly with a float, fine tackle, small floats, light match rods, four pound reel line down to hook links. It's quite satisfying when you do get it right and you do get some halfway decent fish. It's rare now to find people going roach fishing really. A lot of people just want carp, carp, carp. It's easy carp, they hook themselves. But I can tell you now, roach generally don't hook themselves. So you're gonna get a selection of floats for you here. Now these ones are different types of wagglers. You can see they've got, got big bodies on them there and a high vis tip there. You can shot that right down in windy weather. You've got the traditional shape waggler there. Nice big tip, you can put it all out or the roach you want to pivot down a bit. Bulbous here, so this one you have to put quite a bit of shot on and shot it right down low. That will cast quite a long way. If you're fishing closer, just a straight stick float there. It's a loaded, I call that a loaded waggler, that one. Again, quite big, but you can cast quite a way with it. And then if you're fishing close in for roach, a self-cocking or self-writing float that has an integral weight in it and you can attach, really it's for beginners as well, this is basically for beginners, you can attach, you know, at the bottom end only and pivot down to whatever you want with a shot right down to next to nothing. Or very fine, close in margin fishing, a little, almost an onion float, but look how slim this is and look at the tiny indications of bites you can get on the tip there. Real line to say, four pound, five pound, wouldn't go much heavier. Match rod, fixed ball line, closed face, reel, whatever you want to, but you can get hooks to nylon in packets. You just buy these in tackle shops, obviously they don't give them to you for nothing. And inside here, little cellophane packets, you might be able to see. There, put my hand there, is a hook to nylon. They come in various strains, you can have barbless, you can have barbed hooks, depending on all the fishery rules, but generally they will be quite light, say, two or three pounds, so you want it lighter than your real line. I went to Bonds Lake at Berry Hill Fisheries, which does have carp in it, but also has some very good roach in there. Now, a lot of guys don't bother with these, but Dave Roberts tipped me off, have a go for the roach gram, some pretty big ones in there. Do you know what? First cast, first cast I think I got a roach. Man, what a fish. Guys, I just had one cast out with that light match rod. The rain's coming down, we had claps of thunder. I thought, I'm never going to catch anything. Just saw the float slide away. Get this one out of the way. I'll give you an idea. This is uh, one of the old Berry Hill. Big roach there, you can see. Lovely looking fish. Don't know what it weighs. Uh, it's a big one, I don't want to drop this one, but I'm just going to show you there. But apparently they grow well up towards two pounds and beyond in here. And that was first cast, single white maggot. I can't believe that start getting a roach like that. Now I could get myself sorted with the rain. I've got to make sure the camera doesn't get wet. People think it's easy making these films. Yeah, you've got to come out and try it yourself. Well, people are soaking wet. It's been a horror story, an absolute horror story. Never leave your mobile phone on about six annoying phone calls with problems. Just when I wanted a nice peaceful bit of fishing, no. Don't switch it on, take my advice. What a nightmare. Heavens have opened, camera got wet, everything's got wet. There's a puddle behind me, there's a wooden platform to fish on, so I can't put the umbrella in there. So feet are wet, arms wet, heads wet. I had a rud, had that big roach, giant roach, I thought I'm away. I had a rud, it went dead on me, and now by the bend of the rod, if you can see it, there's a big carp on the end. Big compared with roach, anyway. I just hope they haven't moved in on the, on the little and often feed I've been putting in there. And the trouble is, at a size 20 and like two pound bottom, there's no way I can bully the fish. Oh. 
and I don't want to go outside the unpaddle because I don't want to get even more wet. I mean, it must happen to other people as well. Just so annoying. And now come with delicate species like roach. Don't we have a roach unhooking map? I'll tell you what though, good car wash. I'm going to show him to your camera there guys. And get him straight back because this rain does stop and I hope it does stop. There's every chance of getting another one of those big roach. Let's get him back. Well the rain stopped but I've got a nice rud there. Just a small fish but at least it shows you maybe the rain stopped. They might come on the bite. Second time round we'll get him for you. There you go, another rud. Actually stopped raining, got the umbrella down. Nice looking rud there. One thing I will say, just keep yourself a little scald your hand, a little plastic one. You just slide it down the line like this, over the hook, pop it out, easy. I think the reason I'm getting the rud is because I've actually, I've actually shallowed up now. Because David told me gradually through the day you feed and the fish will come up further and further in the water column. And after I had that carp, I was a little bit worried about going shallow. Get this out. Now I've fed a bit more of those four mil pellets. And it seems we've got the rud coming. It's a roach I'm after, really. I really do want one of those roach. And do I go to casters? Do I go to red mac? <laughs> the rub was going in. I expect you saw the bite more than me. Another little tip there, what I did was just wound and move the float once and because I've got no shot down near the bottom it raises it up in the water and I reckon that was probably a carp that took it. Yes, well, your doubtless guess by the way my string is being stretched. Unfortunately the carp have oh, moved in on me. Well, on that size 20 hook, although they can be landed I'm not going to say it's boring, but it's eating into my roach fishing time. And there are occasions when you really want to target one species, and you're sort of disappointed when you hook a carp, because that means I'm going to be five or ten minutes messing around here for a fish I didn't really want to catch. Grateful for it, don't get me wrong. It's only catch this or nothing. Imagine if it was a roach. Oh my god. It's a big roach, it's a big. No, I'm joking. Actually went a bit deeper. I put a single maggot on. I thought I don't want to track the car. I put a single maggot on a 20. No, they found it. I mean it's good sport if you like catching these all the time like this on the match rod, but when you're after roach you just think, hmm, I don't really want a carp. Come on. It's not a bad carp, is it? But let's get back to the roach. Well guys have another carp on. And I've decided to shallow up and move the little, I think it's about a number four, number eight shot up away from the hook, get it sinking slow but within about two feet of the surface and I'm going to take a risk and swing this one. There we go, it's, it's paid off straight away, just that depth change. So when you're float fishing, just a depth change can actually make the difference, you know, between catching and not catching. Too deep, I'm going through them and surface feeders like these rud to be near the surface I might have actually drawn them up with my regular feed so no roach again but some spanking rud so here's our fishing guys look you can see that there just a single maggot popped over all the shot there's my rod top here underneath the float here underneath the waggler so I'm, I'm no more than maybe I'm 30 inches something like that and we're going to see if that works again because I've got that bite straight away just watch your overhead Bushes when you cast them to float. I've got a tip under the water, a few fast turns to sink the line, and I'm almost ready to hook one. Get a loose feed over the top. 
with a four mil pellet. Yeah, a little pinch of him. Salt and pepper to taste. Pinch of red and white maggots. That's right, no bites. Now, when all that's sinking down, I'm going to recast straight away. And that will put my bait above everything I've just catapulted in. And I'm using for my target. Little clump of rushes on the opposite bank. So if I do drift out, because there's a little bit of wind drift here, I drift away, then I can recast and get myself lined up again. Pretty critical when you're fishing at a reasonable distance with a waggler is to get yourself in the same spot each time. You don't want to keep feeding different areas. Come on, fish. Guys, oh, just got the cameras on. This could be the one we're looking for. Let's put that around, let's see what the hell I'm doing. I've another two or three carp, I'm dead for a couple of hours. I've got totally soaked in the rain. I think this is a big roach. Please don't fall off. And why do they make you use barbless hooks now? Yeah, nice roach. Look at that first one. Come on. Holy cow. <laughs> Let's get this one hooked and show you. Four red maggots on a 20. No, it's a giant rud. OMG. That's a match pair I've got. Big roach, big rud. Now what's this all about guys? This rub was on the bottom, four maggots. It should be on the surface with a single maggot. What a beauty. Just look at that. Well pleased, well pleased with that one even though I did think it was a roach. Carp, roach, rud. I've got two, a pair of nice fish to show you there. And I've got another hour of fishing left. You gotta love this weather, haven't you? What is it about this country? Why, why do we live here? I can't film, I can't fish properly. Everything's wet. Have you, uh, have you ever been asked by people why none fishermen they say, oh, don't you fishermen like it in the rain? I hear they bite in the rain, don't they? There's that many raindrops out there, I can't even see them float, so if I had a bite, I'd miss it. Well guys, getting there packing up time. I've got another carp hooked up. And I think they've moved in to stop the roach uh, feeding altogether. Whether I'm going to get it, I don't know. But one thing I have, let's move this around. Get myself set up there. There we go. We're organised, almost. One thing I've been impressed with is the strength of these size 20 hooks and the actual, I think it's 2.6 breaking strain mono that they're on. Even with this match I probably wouldn't, if I was going five, six pounds straight through, I wouldn't be putting much more pressure on there. And it's amazing you can actually get these carp out, well hopefully, on such a small hook. Luckily for me, not a big fish.
You can drip all over the camera bag as well. Another nice cut, guys. They push the roach out completely, but look at the size of this one. I mean, size 20 hook. And there we go. Nice fish to catch on a float rod. Not the species I was after. I've actually had a very good day's carp fishing, even though we're after the roach. I'll just share the roach in the rub to give you an idea what you can get using that waggler technique and those tips. Let's get this guy back. Well guys, I don't usually use a keep net. Special dispensation just to show you this if you just have a quick look, just to get give you an idea. Yeah, this is the difference between look. If you come right in there with that camera, lovely and tight, I'll bring it back there. There's your rud. You can see that there. Very, very red on the fins there, beautiful colour fish. And of course, the top jaw is further back than, oh, there he goes, the bottom jaw. Now I'll show you in comparison. My God. Look at the size. There you go. That's it, that's what I came for. Just the one, but you can see I lay those gently down there. You should be able to just come in on those and see that's the difference between hold still boys, you're on YouTube. The roach and the rud. The rud is in the bottom, big roach in the top. Fantastic, lovely fish on the throat. The carp pushed me out, but at least I've got some other small roach, a uh, small rud in here as well. But those two, for me, are hold still. Oh, they are naughty today, they are naughty. It's been a naughty day. Those two are really what traditional English fishing is all about, especially on a float. Let's get them back. There you go. Beauty, beauty. I was over on the main lake at Berry Hill Fisheries doing another article on bream. Got the bream film out of the way, I couldn't resist it. I had to dive down for a couple of hours fishing off those platforms again on Bond's Lake just to see if I could actually get the roach feeding again. And yes, indeed, the roach were on the feed. Not a rud this time, as you can see there. Lovely, what we call a palm-sized roach. Now, if you were in a match, you'd love to be catching fish every cast like this. And if you get roach feeding, of course, you can. But if you're feeding regularly, you should get rud, roach, even tench. You know, I know they're a bottom feeder, but they will move into a tight swim that you can cast and keep your bait really in something about the size of that circle on the landing net there. Another spanking roach, I did get a few, didn't put them in the net this time, just let them go. And of course, what did happen is, because I was feeding regularly, unfortunately, yes, Mr. Carp again. But that is the unfortunate side of it, even in the winter. I'm told that if you go roach fishing in the winter, the carp are less active and the roach are better uh, feeding them. But if you do feed regularly, then you are going to bring the carp in. So there you go, hope there's a few tips there you picked up. Give it a go, float fishing on a light match rod for roach with light tackle really is great fun. As you can see here, you'll still get the carp as well. So thanks for watching the Tony Austin Fishing Show. Don't forget to watch Mike's TA Outdoors, which is going mad. And we'll see you again in the next day, week or month. And to all the love that has come Oh